Hey guys, what's up? Timmy J Tech here, and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. Today, I will show you how to control a camera to create a simple tutorial for your game. This will allow a tutorial to appear only the first time you play a game so that the user can learn where specific things are or how to interact with certain mechanics. We will be using Sign Machine, which we can import through the Package Manager, and then we will control what that camera is looking at and for how long. To import Sign Machine, we'll go to Window and Package Manager. If you enter the Unity registry of packages and wait for it to load, Scroll down to where Sign Machine is, and you can hit Install. Sign Machine is a virtual camera with many advanced options in which you can take control of. In my case, when I want to track player movement with a camera, I import Sign Machine to do the work for me. By setting the camera to follow or look at a specific component's transform properties, I can tell it what I want it to do, which is follow different key elements of our tutorial. We can also add trigger events when the event is complete, it would switch to the next camera instead of just waiting. Now that we have Sign Machine, it's up here at the top of our window. And if you click it, we can create a virtual camera. The difference between the main camera and the virtual camera is that we definitely need the main camera still. The main camera holds the Sign Machine brain, which can change how the blend is or different update methods. If you want your camera to just cut straight from one camera to the next, you can select cut here in the default blend but I'm gonna leave it as default ease in out because then it will smoothly transition from one camera to the next. Then we have virtual camera one. I'm just gonna rename it to virtual cam. And here in virtual cam, we have all of these different things that we can set. I'm not gonna change anything just yet because this is what we're gonna be editing in the code. My goal is to find the camera and then we'll set the position by looking at different objects in the scene. You can import the camera into your script a couple of different ways. One way is actually having a public sign machine and then you actually drag and drop the component here in Unity. Or you can find the sign machine with tags or by its name. And that's probably how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to add a new tag and call this cam and hit save. So now whenever we're looking for a virtual camera, we can just in our code say find some camera with the tag cam and it will find this specific camera. If you have multiple virtual cameras, you can change the tag to be different names so that it will go from one camera to the next, or you can just have the same camera follow different transitions. So let's start creating the tutorial. I'm going to go into my scripts and right click create a new C Sharp script and we'll call this tutorial. Double click to open it and let's start editing our script file. I'm going to change it to how I like it personally. The first thing we're going to want to do is use the sign machine library. So we'll want using sign machine. And then we can get a reference to our sign machine. So I'll say private sign machine virtual camera. And I'll call this virtual camera cam, just like my tag. Now that we have a reference to our sign machine camera, we're going to want to get this actual camera so that we can manipulate it. Here in start, we'll want to make sure that we can get our camera and use it properly. So we're going to say cam is equal to game object dot find with tag. And inside here, we're going to say cam because that's our tag name. And then we're going to want to get the component off of it um, because that's what we're trying to talk to is the sign machine virtual camera. And that is under our camera object. So here we're going to say get component and then we will open bracket to be for the sign machine virtual camera. Now all we need to do is tell the camera where to go and what to do. Let's go back into Unity and now I'm going to create a couple transition points so that we can set those references and then just move the camera to wherever we please. I'm going to right click and create an empty object and this will be called tutorial one. We'll add a new tag so that we can find these very easily in code. So I'll just call it tutorial and hit save. Tag it as tutorial and make sure that everything is zeroed out. So it's just it's just zeroed out in the transform. It's not anywhere else but at zero, zero, zero. All right, I'm going to move it right here to where the duck is so that it shows exactly that. And I could just say follow the duck, but I want to do this in a more specific manner where I have specific tutorial boss so I can duplicate tutorial one now and call it tutorial two. And then it's going to move from the duck over here to the barn so that you know, oh, okay, 
um, I have to first click the duck and then move it over to the barn. Um, this is a very basic tutorial. Obviously, if you have more mechanics to your game, you're going to want to have different cameras go to different spots and maybe even have pop-ups that say, hey, you should click the duck or you should move your mouse over the duck. And so we'll get more advanced in a second, but now that we have these two tutorial things, we can reference these in our code. I'm just going to say public game object tutorial one, and then I'll duplicate it by doing shift alt and down arrow. Um, tutorial two will be the second one. And then here we have our two game objects. So go back into unity and we're going to want to create an empty object and call this tutorial manager. Put this under our game manager, which you could just put this script under our game manager, but I'm doing this separate so that it's its own thing. And we'll do scripts and we'll drag and drop our tutorial under tutorial manager. So now it's gonna ask for our two tutorials. We can drag and drop tutorial one and tutorial two game objects there. So now we have reference to it. This is a private way where you're getting the camera by tag and this is public so that you can just drag and drop in the editor. This just makes it easier now because we can actually grab the transform of our tutorial. All right, so now we're gonna want a Boolean check to see actually if you have done this tutorial or not, because that's the whole point is if you've already done the tutorial, we don't want them to do that each time they log on to the game. So we're gonna create a private bool and this will be called anything you want. Honestly, I'll just say tutorial complete and I'll set it equal to false because they have not completed the tutorial yet. And so here in the update method, we'll say if tutorial complete is equal to false, then we'll want to do the tutorial. And obviously once we're done with the tutorial, we're going to want to set tutorial complete to equal to true. So now after that is true, it won't run this in the update. So now to do our tutorial stuff, as soon as you enter the game and tutorial complete is false, it'll start the tutorial. This means we want the camera to follow the duck first and then move to the barn. So first we're going to make our tutorial one object be the focus. So I'm going to say cam.follow is equal to tutorial1.transform. This gets the transform positions of this tutorial one, which should be 000, until I moved it. So tutorial one is now at the duck, it's at 4.61 and y minus 3.1. So our camera is now going to go straight to this and only stay there. So we could make it follow the duck object, but that's not what I want to do. I just want them to see the area in which the duck is at and then see the area where the barn is. So now cam.follow is equal to tutorial one. We want to set a coroutine so that after a couple seconds, this changes. I really enjoy using coroutines because it's the simplest way to just set up a function that will run and then wait for a couple seconds and then run something else. So I'll show you how that's done. I'm just going to go right past the update method and I'm going to say public void show tut one. So this is going to show the first tutorial and now inside here we're just going to start coroutine and we're going to actually call another function inside of here, which is going to be called enable tut1. So now that we have enable tut1, we're going to want to create the actual tut1 enable function here. So we'll do that by creating i enumerator, and we'll call this uh, enable tut1. And inside of this I enumerator, we're going to want to do something, then wait a few seconds and then do something else. So here we're going to want to follow the camera. Then we're going to want to yield return new, and then we'll say wait for seconds and pass in how many seconds we want to wait. So um, I'll say about five seconds. And then we're going to want to do the second one. So cam.follow is equal to tutorial2.transform. So now it's going to do one thing, wait five seconds, and then do the second one. So I can actually 
just call this enable tutorial and then uh, I'll just call this one show tutorial because we're not just doing the one thing we're doing both now here this is changed and now inside of here instead of having all the code we can just call the show tutorial function and then complete the tutorial will be set to true so now when this runs it will do the coroutine it will wait a couple seconds after it switches from the first camera it'll switch to the second camera and then once that's done it will set it to true but then we want to make sure that the camera is not just following on that barn afterwards so i hit play here and the tutorial obviously has not been done so here it's going to show the duck spot and five seconds later it's going to move to the barn now it is kind of messing with our canvas so that is kind of weird so the last thing we want to do is just disable the camera once it is done. We're going to want to get another reference to this sign machine camera, but we'll want to get it as a public game object so that we can actually set it active or not active. So I'll just call this VCAM. And then here in the tutorial manager, we can set our virtual camera here to VCAM. I'm just going to put the tutorials under the tutorial manager so they're out of the way. I'm going to create a second function, so I'll say public void stop cam and this is going to start coroutine called disable cam perfect and then we'll create the enumerator function i enumerator right there and we'll call this disable cam and inside here we will call the set active to false and if you wanted to do something before here, we could obviously do that, but I don't think we really need to just now. And then I want to check if the tutorial is complete, then it will stop the camera. So after this, I'll say if tutorial is complete is equal to true, then we will start the coroutine stop cam. So I'll just call stop cam. And so now it will run the tutorial. And once that's done, it'll set tutorial to complete. And then if the tutorial complete is true, it'll stop the camera. Let's hit play and see what happens here. So we got five seconds here to see the duck. There we go. And now it should move to the barn. But I'm pretty sure it disabled the camera before that happened. So instead of this, I'll just say right after cam.follow tutorial to transform, I'll just call stop cam. So then it will do the same coroutine right after. And then just get rid of this in the update because I think it was calling it before it was even finishing. Before the 10 ish seconds were up. So let's see if this works here. So we got the duck. Wait a few seconds. It should move to the barn. There we go. And wait a few seconds and it should disable the camera. And I believe it is disabling it. Let's see, we got that. Wait a couple seconds. It, we should watch it move right here perfect and then wait a few more seconds and it should disappear perfect so it disappears now we just need to make sure that we're focusing on to the the main canvas before we cancel the camera so that it actually goes back to normal to do this we'll want one more game object which is the canvas to look at so we'll say game object canvas and then we'll put that in our tutorial manager here we'll say our canvas that we want to look at is the GUI canvas. And there we go. So now we'll stop the camera. It'll set active to false. And we want the cam.follow to equal the canvas.transform. So now it'll set the canvas as the last thing it follows. And then it will disable the camera right after. So let's see how this works. So hit play. And I'll keep it in this mode so you can see the actual camera icons. So we got like a few seconds here that it will follow in this area and then a few seconds for it to follow in this area and then it, well it doesn't seem like it switched I think I'm going to create a third tutorial spot here and then just make it follow this last one which will be in the center so that it just resets the position to zero zero and let's see how that works so just change this game object to tutorial three And then change canvas to tutorial three. Okay, so right now it says 
If the tutorial is not complete, show tutorial. Show tutorial will set the tutorial 1, wait 5 seconds, and then show tutorial 2. Then we're going to stop the camera by setting it to tutorial 3, waiting 5 seconds, and then stopping the camera. But the issue is, is that we're already setting tutorial 2, and then we're setting tutorial 3 right after, so it skips the tutorial 2. There we go. So it goes from the first one to the second one, and then it will wait, and then it will set it in the center, and it should cancel that camera. So there we go. We've completed the tutorial, and different steps are involved to complete this. Obviously, my duck is a canvas, and so it is going to move around compared to the canvas. So if you are having cameras move around, make sure that anything on the screen will move with you. So if you do have a, a HUD, like the buy auto roundup if that's like connected to the screen wherever it moves then it'll move with you um but as i said like the duck was part of the screen and so when it was falling to different spots it was going with it so make sure that your objects are all like in the background and not part of the canvas but there you have it this is a very simple tutorial that i'll be adding to my mobile game this will allow a tutorial to appear only the first time you play a game so that the user can learn where specific things are or how to interact with certain mechanics it's meant to be simple and quick so that it's just done and out of the way and it will never show it again. But you can set a trigger so that it'll set the tutorial to restart and then people can re-watch the tutorial over. The last thing you're going to want to do is make sure you set up player prefs so that it actually saves if the tutorial is complete. Here we can do serialize field and this will show it in the Unity editor. Under tutorial complete, we're going to want to say player prefs dot set int. And because it is a bool that we're setting to a number, it's either going to be 1 is true or 0 is false. But you don't have to worry about numbers because we're going to be taking that in from our actual bool tutorial complete. So we'll say here in quotes tutorial complete because that's the name of our player prefs. And we'll say comma tutorial complete. So now it'll check if it is 1 or 0. And then it will set that bool to either true or false compared to what this player prep is so now we're just setting it here because we want it to be complete so then we're going to set true is true so it will set our player prefs to one so then it's going to save it as the data as true and it won't change that unless if we you know change it ourselves and at start we're going to want to get the player pref to make sure that that is the right data because then once it goes into the update method if it is true or false that's really going to matter to load it, we're going to say tutorial complete is equal to player prefs dot get int because we're getting that integer now. And inside the get int, we're going to want to call tutorial complete the name of the actual player pref. Tutorial complete. And make sure you set it is equal to one because then it's going to check if it's true. And if we hit play here, it will do the tutorial because tutorial is false. So it's going to do that, and then it's going to move over to the second one, and move over to the third one. And if we look in Tutorial Manager, Tutorial Complete is set to true. So it was even set to true before it was waiting on this five seconds, but that's all right. So if we hit um, the play button, it will uncheck it. But since it saved it to player press, when we hit play again, Tutorial Complete is already checked, and it doesn't set up the tutorial. So now you can just play the game like normal. Player prefs is a very powerful thing. You can save all kinds of data, and it's the easiest way to just quickly save it to memory. But that's all for today. If you did enjoy, please drop a like. I'll have more tutorials coming soon. If you have any ideas for tutorials you want to see, just let me know in the comments below. I have a couple ideas, but for now, I'm just trying to learn different aspects of Unity and incorporate them into my game. Please subscribe and turn on that notification bell as every view helps. But if you did enjoy, please drop a like. Thank you all for watching, and have a nice day.